collectors, this is Joseph Prodzik with Statue Review. Tell me, friends, have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? No? Well, me neither. But I can show you someone who has. This is Batman Michael Keaton premium format figure from Sideshow Collectibles. In 1989, the first major Batman movie starring Michael Keaton was released. The movie featured the origin of the iconic DC character and pitted him against Jack Nicholson's Joker. Batman was a box office success and led to Batman the Animated Series and three additional films. In addition, the movie helped to establish the modern superhero genre. I can still remember standing in line with my parents to see Batman. After watching it, I became addicted to the character and that is something that has lasted to this day. I am not overly impressed with the art box. The box has some nice silhouettes of the statue and it's done well, but I was expecting something completely different and I think I was a little disappointed when I didn't get it. When I think about the Batman movie, a specific image pops up in my head, that classic black poster with the large Batman logo. While the box would have been simpler than what we've been given, I think I would have liked it better. I was really impressed by how well the statue was packaged, as parts of it seem a little frail, but I had no issues. Sideshow did a terrific job making the statue look like Michael Keaton, no doubt about it. Keaton has a strong chin and expressive lips which are accurately portrayed here. The glass eyes help to make the statue look alive and they are surrounded in shadow. One difference in the design that people have pointed out is Batman's sudden ability to turn his head as the original costume did not allow for a good range of motion in the head and neck area. I don't mind Sideshow taking this small liberty as it's not too drastic of a change. Batman is a part of a recent trend of statues from Sideshow that has characters on large bases. Batman is descending a flight of stairs in the Batcave and that makes this a really tall piece. At over 26 inches tall, he is even taller than the comic version which will make him a little bit more difficult to display, especially in a cabinet. While the base has some nice details, including a few magnetic bats, I'm not sure I like the story that is being told. During the film, more time is spent in the Batcave as Bruce Wayne rather than Batman. The exclusive version adds a grapple gun which fits the character but not necessarily the setting, which is why I opted for the regular version. I think it would have been more fitting to have him on a gothic rooftop or inside a chemical plant. Looking at the sculpt of the armor, it's just okay. The upper body and abs look good from a distance but seem overly sculpted, especially when compared to the lower body, which seems plain in comparison. I think the thighs could have used a more muscular sculpt. Not necessarily any deep lines, but more of a roundness to the muscle. The cowl sculpt is excellent and has all of the right lines. The details of the Nike boots are a nice touch. I think Sideshow did a really great job with the leather cape. The top of the cape is attached to the neck under the cowl with a thin strip of velcro and is then further held in place by the cowl which uses a very strong magnet. The material used and strong magnet allow the cape to be easily maneuvered and allows Batman to be displayed with a variety of different looks. Even with this strong magnet though, there is still a noticeable gap between the cowl and cape. The paint on the armor is mostly a flat black. I say mostly because there are some small spots where the black is not flat and in the wrong place this can be very noticeable. In the right light the flat black looks good. In the wrong light the paint almost seems too flat and I think the statue could use some more shine to look good in normal lighting. It's not bad but I just would like for it to be better. The belt is a goldish yellow color and I think the paint application is overcomplicated and would have been better if simplified. The paint on the face has a good tone and isn't overly dark. Overall Batman's paint is just okay. The paint on the base is very good and I have found no issues, though the rock doesn't quite fit the rest of the statue. That is mostly because of a difference in material. The overall quality of Batman himself is good. I had a slight issue getting his boot flat against the stairs but this was quickly and carefully rectified. Carefully being the key word as there is a drop in the quality of the material used in the base. The stairs feel fragile and flimsy but do seem to hold Batman well. The plastic material used in the base does give the statue overall a cheap feel. This is very apparent in the rock and bottom of the base especially. With such a big base I know Sideshow had to lighten the piece by using a different type of material but it doesn't mean I have to like it. The cheap material in the base made me nervous about moving the statue but I found that not to be the case. With one hand on the rock and the other on Batman I had no trouble moving him around. 
The statue easily spins on my turntable, has good balance, and the build is excellent. As with most statues from Sideshow's DC line, the addition size is high. The exclusive version has an addition size of 1250, while the regular has an addition size of 2500. Both editions are priced at $399.99, and as of this review, the regular version can still be purchased from Sideshow. While sold out, the exclusive version can still be found for around cost. With such a high edition size, prices should remain pretty flat, and demand for this piece should remain pretty low based on its quality. With the standard prices for Sideshow Premium formats climbing into the $400 and more price range, I applaud Sideshow for trying to give us our money's worth. I'm not sure they were able to do that here, as it seems they had to cut too many corners to achieve this ambitious design. The value of the statue is just okay. I would have rather have paid more for a higher quality piece that has a smaller base. I'm on the fence with my final review of this statue. Michael Keaton as Batman fits my collection and he takes me back to a time when I first fell in love with the character. But he won't be a centerpiece of my collection. He'll be placed in a corner with just the right amount of light and I'll be happy with him there. People will be able to tell that this is Michael Keaton, but they won't be able to see the unexceptional paint or be able to tell that the base is less than stellar. He'll probably even get a few oohs and ahs. But as a collector, I'll dream about what could have been and I'll always know where those shiny spots of paint are. My review score is 3 out of 5 for good. As a big fan of Batman, I'm happy to have this version in my collection but I'm also glad I used my reward points to take $100 off the price. For more statue reviews and updates on my collection, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This has been Joseph Prodzik for Statue Review. Thanks for watching.